<laughs> Hello, it's Rob here from Woodward English. How is everyone? How has your week been? Have you had a good week? I hope so. I've been in the chat earlier today saying hello to 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 different people. We've got um Roxo, Jessica. Where else we got there? Mirmar, who's from Guatemala, which is Miguel, Adolfo, Ma uh, Mahomed, also Allah. Hello everyone. As always, the first five minutes is to say hello to everyone and let me know where you're saying hey Lulu, how's it going? How's Duke? How's the dog and everything? <laughs> Great to see you. We got Julia or Julia also. Hola desde Bolivia. Hello from Bolivia. Ibrahim, oh my god, oh my teacher, good evening. How have I been? I've been great, thank you. It is Saturday morning here in New Zealand. Okay? It's early in the morning. Okay? That's what's happening. And ah, uh, and most of you, it is probably Friday evening night or early, early Saturday morning. But Algeria is present. Hey, Alicia, good to see you again. Greta, we've got Monica, Magda, uh, I sing back to Great Naveen. Oh, lots of familiar faces. I like this when it happens. We've got Larissa, oh, from Gibraltar. Ah, oh, cool. It's a, like a little small place, that one there. I've actually been there. Um, Minor, um, Minor also from Costa Rica. How is everyone? Today, ah, uh, I'll explain it in another three minutes from now. I'm just so excited for this lesson today. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. There's going to be lots of vocabulary and everything. But at first, I want to say hello to everyone. We've got Olga, uh, Bao Gemma. And if you've come here to see or to read or listen to the story, just put it fast forward to five minutes from now and then the story will begin. But the first five minutes, it's always important for me to say hello to everyone. So, and that's what I do. So you've got, you got Algeria, Costa Rica, the rich coast. <laughs> hey, Elin, great to see you again. How's it going? Yes, you are, I remember you're from France. Yep, you're on Friday there. Here I have, I got my big mug of coffee. Okay, you know the difference? You got the cup and then you got the mug. The mug's the big one. Your wife sounds great. <laughs> How's it going? I'm doing well. Um, Thanks from, you can't hear my wife. She's somewhere else at the moment. Hey, from Romania. Great. So how was your week? How was your week? Was it busy, crazy, relaxed, fun? Now, this story, you are fortunate that you are here on time for the story from the start. Because there's lots of things that happen in the story that are important to know. It's a great story. Now this here, hey, Arif, Arife, also, hello. Now this story, I used to teach this story in when I was when I was teaching classes to to humans. I'm not saying you're not humans, <laughs> but l you know, in person, not online, not on YouTube. I used to do. I've been teaching for 25 years. So I thought, you know, so I had a lot of interaction with students and everything. And this story was a favorite story for many students. And I've been waiting to do this story for a long time. And I thought, I'm going to do it today. So um, you're lucky. I'm happy that you're here on time. It's going to be a good one. Because there's lots of vocabulary in here. Ibrahim from Somalia. Uh, but I live in Egypt. Cool. You've had a busy week. That's interesting. Hello, teacher. How's it going? I'm from Algeria. I'm doing well. Hamosh, Alicia. Hot week. Ooh, yeah. Actually, here in New Zealand, it was actually cold this week. Was it? No, yesterday. Two days ago. It was really cold. 
It was almost zero degrees. Okay, for me that's cold. <laughs> the subtropical climate. <laughs> Ahmed, hello. So busy, I had lots of exams. What type of exams? English exams? University exams? Blood tests? <laughs> Also had to go to work. Ah, Dominican Republic. Hello, Emmanuel. How's it going? Now, if you... I'm going... To, what I'm going to do is... I will show you this. Uh, where's the website? Um, just press this one here. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. And I'm small. Okay, if you want to follow the story, you don't need to open this website if you don't want to. But later, I'm just going to put a link here. I have the story. But, oops, out. What did I just do? I'm going to close that one. There it is. But I haven't put the ending of the story here. If you know the ending, don't spoil it. Otherwise, you'll probably get banned by someone. <laughs> okay, so it's on here if you want to follow through the story and everything like that. And there's lots of vocabulary at the bottom. But all of this I'm going to show you and explain are in the lesson today. So let's jump into it. Boom. Okay, let's have a look. Now I need my version. Where is it? What else we got in there? Last hello, we got the Pili. Oh, from Peru. What part of Peru? Lima, maybe. Anna, great to have you. From Russia, yes. Uh, learn, I guess I reached. Yep, you're here on time. That's right. University exams in English. Ooh, my voice is unique. That's because I was singing karaoke last night until four o'clock in the morning, so it probably sounds different. <laughs> Hi from Brazil. Lima, yeah, I guessed well. Hey, thanks. Greetings from Bogota in Colombia. Nice. <sighs> I, I've, I've had some good experiences in Bogota. Anyway, let us begin this story. There's lots of vocabulary and everything like that. Are you ready? Let's begin. Okay. And I've already... I, I, I'm saved time. Because what I've done is I've put different parts of the story here on the screen okay so i'll read it and i'll explain different um, vocabulary this one's very simple but i will also ask you also okay different you know for an explanation of some words let us begin starting from now there were once two men okay well, just remember with once we don't we don't say one time two times or anything like that. What did I just hear? What's that? Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Just gonna just wait one second. <laughs> but with once, <laughs> it's like oh, it's a real life story. Well, this story was actually written in. Let me have a look. Where is it on the website? Oh, yeah, website, boom. I've got to find my version of it. Where is it? Here it is. <laughs> uh, this is a version. What we're going to uh, learn today is Alan Seeger's... He didn't call it The Window. He actually called it The Street. And it was first published in the London Mercury, like some type of newspaper or magazine, don't know, in 1933. So this is 90 years ago, just about. And then it was republished in Vanity Fair. Now, this is not a true story, maybe. But it was based on on something that happened to the writer. Okay? So it's sort of true, but it's not true. I'll, I will explain more if it's a true story or not at the end. Okay? So, let's go back to the... Where is it? Full screen, conversation, boom! I've got this little stream deck where I push the buttons and it changes the thing. And I've got to go over here now. Okay, so once. So it's like one time. We don't say one time or two times. We say once or... What's the other word? Uh, where is it? Ah, oh, where's the... One second. Ah, I've got the text covered. Okay. Uh, one second, trying to find... Oi. I can't actually get one of the words. Okay, there it is. That'll do. 
boxes, just changing everything. Okay, here it is. So instead of once, okay, so you don't say one time or two times. We actually just say once, twice, okay? You don't say two times. Okay, some people say one time, two times, but it's not grammatically correct to say once or twice. Is it will it be my fantasy? <laughs> once upon... That's a great one, Mary. Now, many stories start with once upon a time. Okay, the classic fairy tales. You know what fairy tales are? Okay, we talked about um, reading and stories... Um, was it last week? I can't remember. A fairy tale. Okay, a fairy is one of those magical creatures, and they have wings, like it's not an angel, they're like usually small, they live in the forest, and yeah, they fly around, that, that, that is a, that's a fairy, it's like a little, usually little creatures with wings, and they sometimes magic, not to be confused with angels, and tail is another word for story, so you have story, or a, or tale story or tale so fairy tale is like a story it usually has like magic and and things like that examples cinderella um little red riding hood um can't think of any other one <laughs> there are many other ones <laughs> like when you need to think of them you can't so yeah there's another one okay some people in the past Okay, you have three times. Whoops, three toes. <laughs> three times. Here it is. Now, thrice, you got once, twice. Now, thrice is not used around our nowadays. It's not used nowadays. Okay? Just say three times, four times, etc. Because thrice, if you say that, people like think, what planet are you from? Okay? Now, okay, let's get to the story. I'm just waiting for someone to get to be ready, and they're ready. Boom. Okay. There were once two men, both seriously ill. What's another word for ill? The three little pigs. That's another one, Lulu. Three little pigs is another one. What's another word for ill? Another word for ill? Sleeping beauty is another one. Good. Oh, you guys are great. Another word for ill is and explanations and questions. Yes, there it is. Okay, you can say ill or sick. They're pretty much interchangeable. That's good. So there were these two men. Both of them were seriously ill in the same room of a great hospital. Yeah, not well, unwell, great ones. Okay. So just imagine, there are these two people, two men, they're both seriously ill in the same room in, in a hospital, okay? So sometimes you have four or five people, but in this room there are only two people. Remember that, okay? Quite a small room. It had one window looking out on the world. Now, quite. What does quite mean? Quite means disease. Okay, diseased is, is like, it's like there's some type of infection or like virus or cancer or something like that. Twelve or more, I don't remember. Okay, look at this. Quite means to some degree or level. Okay, so quite a small room. Yes, a really small room. Okay, because you've got very, very small, but quite small is like next. Okay, so what you're thinking of is someone mentioned, which is different from this word. Okay, so we've got quite, which is different from quiet. Okay, look at this. Um, now, quiet, this one here, has two syllables. And this one has one syllable. Okay, listen to the pronunciation. 
this one here quiet and quiet quiet there's two quiet and quiet now quiet means um not noisy silent okay hey jacqueline how's it going so it's 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 an intensifier exactly Billy. okay so quite a small room which means you know to is to some degree it's like fairly small okay so quite a small room it had one window looking out on the world two men they're both really sick seriously sick or ill in a hospital and there's one window in this hospital room looking out on the world okay wow okay this one's a bit longer put that over here for now down here let's have a look um what else is there i've been the two doctors <laughs> one of the men as a part of his treatment how can we explain treatment anyone know what treatment is i mean it's going to appear but let's see if you know how you can explain treatment what is treatment one of the men as a part of his treatment it's like a cure medicine yeah what else we got treatment is something that is done medicine makes something you know to relieve yeah relieve with a ve because it's the verb treatment is something that is done to cure an illness ill and sick is the is the noun okay so we have ill is the uh, sorry adjectives ill is an adjective illness is the noun okay what about with sick so if we have sick which is an adjective which is a description the same thing sickness so you have i am ill i am sick <coughs> like this my sickness has continued for three days my illness so this is the adjective and this is the noun so treatment is something that is done to cure to help someone recover from an illness or an injury at a fair yep to treat an illness perfect treatment uh, a way to make someone feel better exactly without using rum <laughs> um cure cure good relieve yeah that's the one diagnosis that's a diagnosis is like when someone tells you what your problem is but you don't necessarily fix it or cure it or have a treatment for it so diagnosis is no you're sick but what do i do no no you're just sick that's a diagnosis a treatment is when you do something to try and recover for example if i have um i don't know a cold or the flu usually the treatment stay in bed have lots of liquid and that's it <laughs> things like that so so one of the men as a part of his treatment you know to help him feel better because remember he's really sick he was allowed give me another word for allowed go in the chat hello hassan another word for allowed this one here give me one more word for allowed permit great so this is not necessarily the feeling because you have happy happiness crazy craziness <laughs> it's just used the ness at the end is sometimes used to make an adjective a noun permitted perfect yes oh i love these oh so many intelligent people here this is awesome
There you go. Ah. So we have... So, where is it? So, instead of treatment, so allowed means, look at that, permitted. So as a part of his treatment to make him feel better, he was allowed or permitted to sit up in bed, okay, for an hour in the afternoon, okay? So for one hour in the afternoon, he was allowed or permitted to sit up as a part of his treatment. And what was his treatment? Something to do with draining the fluid from his lungs. Wow, okay. Draining. What is to drain? To drain is to remove the liquid from something. Okay, you have the kitchen sink and it's full of water. You pull the plug like this. And the water, blah, 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 it goes down the drain, which is the noun. So we have the drain, which is the noun. And the verb is to drain. Oh, that one's easy. How's that? Okay. So it goes down the drain. So it means to remove liquid from something, to get rid of. That's a good one. To get rid of water or fluid. Perfect. So, something to do with draining the fluid, fluid is liquid, from his lungs. What are your lungs? Yeah, the water goes down. Yeah, sometimes I've felt emotionally and mentally drained. That's a very good one, that one. So, normally it's associated commonly with liquid. But also to feel drained... As you put, it means to feel exhausted, incredibly tired. So, to feel drained, that's a good example. Thank you for that. This is something different. To feel drained is like all of the energy inside of you has gone, been taken out of you. It means, ah, oh, to feel drained means I feel exhausted. Okay? I feel exhausted. So that was, that was a good one. Thank you for sharing that. Anyway, oh, we'll leave it there. We drain the swimming pool. Perfect, Billy. Remove? Yeah, it's like, but usually remove liquid. <laughs> to drain my brain. Yeah, it's like, it's like removing the energy. So normally it's associated with liquid, but it can also, we can, let's just say to remove liquid or energy from something okay oh so, okay so what was the lungs someone mentioned it at a fair mentioned good we can breathe with lungs exactly so your lungs are the organs not the musical organs they're the organs <laughs> in your chest hey harold how's it going the organs in your chest that you use <gasps> For breathing, lung is an interior part of the body on the right and left side. Because you've got two lungs normally. Lungs, they're vital organs which allow us to absorb oxygen. Exactly. So you absorb oxygen through it and it converts it into, I don't know, things. <laughs> Whatever the lungs do. <laughs> anyway, so, in summary... Let's going up to here. So the two men, they're both very sick in a hospital. But one of the men, you know, as a part of his treatment, for one hour every day, he could sit up in bed. You know, just sit up in bed. But, you know, it has some, something to do with, you know, removing the liquid from his lungs. Because he, he can't do it on his back. He needs to sit up and something to do with draining the liquid or the fluid from his lungs, that was part of his treatment. Lung is a very important organ in our bodies. It is. Right. Next part. So this person that had the, is having the treatment for one hour, his bed was next to the window. Remember, there's one window in the room. His bed was next to the window. The one that can sit up 
the fluid from his lungs. He sat up. His bed was next to the window. But the other man, okay, remember there's two men, had to spend all his time flat on his back. Okay. Now, to spend time is to use your time doing something. Okay? To spend time, you use your time doing something. So, in this case, the other man who's not next to the window, who spend or use his time flat on your back. Now, flat on your back means to be on your back in a completely horizontal position. You're not up a little bit. You're not up, you know, a lot. It's just like completely horizontal. Okay. Hey, hey, Leandro, how's it going? So the ad other man was bedridden. Exactly. Well, they're both bedridden, which means you have to stay in bed. But one of them, he can sit up. One of them sits up, always next to the window, and the other one is always on his back, horizontally, lying flat on his back. Exactly. Okay, so that is the situation. Now, every afternoon, when the man next to the window was propped up for his hour. Wow! Hey Lali, how's it going? Every afternoon when the man next to the window was propped up. Ooh! To prop up! What does that mean? How can you explain to prop up? To prop up means... Hang on, one second. I just want to... Open something up while I wait for you. And if you want to see the rest of the story, the first part, if you just arrived, you can check out the first part here. Let's have a look. Support. Hey, Alejandra, how's it going? Uh, looking at his watch. Support. Support's a good one. Ready, prop up, hmm. Spend time on something or spend time in something? Um, Indra Jane, it's spend time on something or doing something. So every afternoon when the man next to the window was propped up, to prop up means to prevent something from falling by putting something under it to support. For example, I am here like this. I'm propping up my head. I'm in bed, and I prop up my head with my arm. It's like to support my head with my with my hand and my arm. I'm propping up. So, for example, in an earthquake, sometimes the buildings like this. So what they do is they they prop up the building so it doesn't completely fall. Okay. So it's like, what's another situation of prop up? Can you think of a situation where you prop something up? Ah, for example, a baby. Sometimes the baby, you know, how they, they you, put, you know, stand them up. And if you don't prop them up, sometimes they, they fall. <laughs> it's not funny, but it is funny. Yes. So you have this like little child standing up. And then if you don't prop them up with pillows or a baby sitting a, a brand new baby. A baby, they cannot sit up normally by themselves. Because they just like, uh, they fall over. So what you need to do, you need to put pillows around the baby to support, to prop up the baby. So the baby doesn't fall over. <laughs> but it is fun watching them fall over. Anyway, so every afternoon... When the man next to the window was propped up because he couldn't sit up by himself. He needed support like maybe pillows or something or the, the bed actually goes up like that and he's sitting there. So every afternoon when the man next to the window was propped up for his hour, he would pass the time 
by describing what he could see outside. Okay? Two men, both really sick. One of the men, for one hour every day, he can sit up and he's next to the window. So he looks out the window and he describes what he could see outside. And the other man is flat on his back. He can't move. So he just listens to what the other man says. Okay? The window. We prop up our skull for our neck. Ah, your neck is propped up. Mm. It's like usually something external. Your neck does prop up your skull, but it's usually something external. Ah, if you know the ending, don't say it, learner. <laughs> don't, no spoilers. Okay, so the window apparently overlooked a park where there was a lake. Now, to overlook means to see a place or an area from a higher position. For example, you're looking, you're in a building and you're overlooking a park. Sometimes the boss is in the office up there and he's overlooking the workers in the factory. He's looking down. You look down on something, okay? So overlooked, so the guy next to the window is sitting up, it overlooks a park where there was a lake, okay? There were ducks, quack, quack. And swans. I don't know what sounds a swan makes. <laughs> Probably, it doesn't go quack, I don't think. A swan is also a type of bird. It's a large bird with a long, thin neck. They're usually white, sometimes black. And they live on or near the water. They're like very graceful and beautiful creatures. Sometimes they have like a black part near their nose. Okay. There were ducks and swans in the lake. And children. You overlook the fence. Exactly. <laughs> no, you look over the fence. Ah, that's different. You look over the fence. So it's usually when you're up higher. There were ducks and swans in the lake. And children came to throw them rocks. <laughs> no, not rocks, sorry. And children came to throw them bread. You know? Giving bread. Elegant birds. They are elegant birds. So the children overlook to see from a higher place. Perfect. So there are ducks and swans and the children came to throw them bread. Not rocks. Bread. And, you know, to throw sail model boats. Yes, like they're feeding the ducks and swans. Very good. Overlook, covering the whole site. Yeah, you're looking down on everyone. Okay? Like sometimes the teacher is overlooking the students in the exam from up high to make sure no one's cheating. Throw the rocks is cool. Of course it is. <laughs> ah. If you see a... No, I was going to say, if you see a child throwing rocks, just throw the child in there. But I'll get in trouble. So I won't say that. Oops, I just did. Anyway. Um, so, sail model boats. What does that mean? Now, to sail means to travel on water. Typically using sails. A boat usually sails. But what are sails? A sail is a large piece of cloth on a boat that helps make the boat travel on water. So like the wind catches the sail and it helps push the boat along. Okay? So that is th the verb is to sail, to move on water, to put boats on water. And model boats are a smaller version of a real... Thank you for asking. As a smaller version of a real boat. And it's usually a toy. So a model boat is a small boat and that the children play with in the lake. So you've got the ducks in the lake, you've got the swans, and children throwing bread at the ducks and swans. And some of the children... The, yes, in Spanish it's that. And some of the children 
they sail model boats so they have little toys boats and they just maybe it's remote control maybe just the wind but they're playing with boats exactly wow your spanish is really good <laughs> yeah sometimes it could be paper ones could be paper boats too but model boats are usually like more like smaller versions of real boats yeah so to sail means to move on water okay so the guy next to the window describing there's a lake there's a park and a lake and oh, there are ducks quack quack and swans whatever noise they make i don't know i don't know i don't know what noise they make in the lake and the children are throwing the bread to the ducks and swans and they're sailing model boats on this lake okay next one but not only that there is more float by help of the wind that's a great one it's yes edison that's a good one it's like an accurate version of a real boat yeah that's perfect you're awesome i love you guys so what else young lovers oh. young lovers walked hand in hand Hand in hand, when two people are walking hand in hand, it means they're holding each other's hand, okay? But look at the preposition, hand in hand. You can walk arm in arm, two ways. So hand in hand, the preposition is in. Arm in arm, foot in foot, no. You don't do that. <laughs> so hand in hand. They're like an egg. Yeah. So, do you still walk hand in Always. Always. Edison, do you still walk hand in hand with your wife? Always. Sometimes the kids do. And they don't like it. Ah. <laughs> but always. You need to do this. And I, yeah, anyway. I'll get sidetracked. Just people, they, they sometimes, they don't do that. Why? It's like, ah, contact, physical touching. <gasps> anyway, young lovers walked, ha do you walk hand in hand with your partner? Or your children? Or anyone? <laughs> young lovers walked hand in hand beneath. Okay, beneath. What does beneath mean? One word for beneath means... Give me a give me an example. You can say beneath or yes, you do. Good, sorry. Another word for beneath is never because I don't have. Oh, <laughs> there are people who smoke cigarettes and drink some beer in the park. Getting <laughs> yeah, that, that's coming in the next part. <laughs> They're annoying the lovers under under underneath. Perfect. Okay, there we go. You can say beneath or under or underneath. Usually we just say under. Beneath and under. They're interchangeable for now. Yes, above. No, above is the opposite. <laughs> Below. <laughs> Below, that's another one. Good. I need to create a lesson about the difference between below and under. I've got to remember to do that. Anyway, let's continue. So these young lovers, not old lovers, <laughs> young lovers walked hand in hand beneath the trees which means under the trees and there were flowers smell the flowers when you walk by and stretches of grass Ooh. okay this is just vocabulary for for a story it's not something you would normally say but i will explain it okay normally you have the verb to stretch okay so normally <laughs> so normally to stretch means to pull something to make something longer or wider usually by pulling it like you stretch your pants when you eat too much because yeah your stomach gets bigger so you to stretch so that is the normal meaning and use of to stretch to make it longer exactly but here it says stretches which is a noun stretches of grass so what do you think it means if to stretch means like to pull something like this 
What do you think stretches of grass means? You stretch before exercising. That's great. Yeah, you're supposed to do that. If you don't, before you play football, oh, God, it hurts for days. That's a good one. It's like saying fields of, gla gr of glass. <laughs> fields of grass. Exactly. So stretches of grass are large areas of grass. You stretch before exercise. Exactly. You stretch. Good to see you, Jorge. How's it going? In Chile. So you got fields of... So it's long expanses, long extensions of grass. Patches of grass? No, patches are like little small amounts. Stretches of grass is like really big expanses of grass. So, you got these expanses of grass. You got games of softball. Softball is like baseball, except for the ball is soft. Still hurts if it hits you. And at the back, behind the fringe. Hey, Claudia. Behind the fringe of trees. <gasps> oh, man, this text, this part here is interesting. Now, what does the fringe of trees mean? How's it going, Rodelia? Grass is uncountable. Yes, grass is uncountable. So, so we've got stretches. So, fringe is normally not associated with trees. Can someone explain fringe for me? What, 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 what? In what situation do you use fringe normally? You don't say fringe of trees. Edge, good. What else? In what situation do you, do you use fringe? Edges, yeah. What else? Um, boom! Margin, yeah, that's a good one. Now, normally fringe is associated with hair. The thing that I do have, but it's just behind my head. <laughs> Not the shiny thing here. It's where the, what's supposed to be in the shiny part. Okay, the fringe is normally the straight line of hair that hangs over the forehead. This is your forehead. I've got a quite a large forehead. <laughs> so this is the forehead. So a fringe is a line of hair. Okay? It's so like a straight line of hair. Like, you know, typical, like, the mother cuts the, the child's hair, and it's like, and it's like a straight line of hair. And in American English, they're actually called bangs. But in British English and New Zealand English, are straight. the rest of the world English, it's called fringe. So it's a line of hair. And it's a straight line. So here it says, the fringe of trees. You can imagine... That a fringe of trees is like a line of trees of the same height, like a line of trees, more or less straight, of the same height, okay? The horrible haircut from the 80s! Well, actually, I have a fringe, so... <laughs> it's from the 80s or 90s, even today you will see it. It's not just the old, it's not just ancient times. <laughs> it's not just from ancient times. <laughs> <laughs> it's also recent you'll see this. Uh, what else we got there? Um, yeah, it's also called bangs. It ex hey, Mrs. G, great to see you again. It exactly. So fringe is also called bangs in American English. Perfect. Um, how about a bunch? A bunch of a bunch of trees? You don't really say that. It's like a group of trees or like a woods or something like that hey your lit's here too great hey all of the members are coming in this is cool okay so like a typical hip-hop singer edison you're probably right i don't actually listen to much hip-hop i listen to i'm a rock i'm rock <laughs> yeah but they probably do have a fringe um so it's like yeah it's like a line of trees it's like an imaginary, but it is like a line of trees. The limit of the top of the trees. Wow. This is my favorite line because it has a lot of new words. Ooh, we've got more words coming up. 
Oh, Eva says, strands or locks of hair that fall over the front. Ah, no, a lock, a lock of hair is like a thin group of hair, like this, okay? Typical, like this. Doesn't Superman have a lock of hair that comes down? Can't remember, anyway. So it's like a line. The Prince Charming's haircut, yes, perfect, Jorge. Prince Charming's haircut from the Shrek movie is like, He's got a fringe there. <laughs> That's perfect. A bunch of trees would be like cut trees, put them together. Yeah, you don't say bunch of trees. Okay. So, you've got the young lovers. Uh, and behind the fringe of trees was a fine view of the city skyline. What is the city skyline? It is the outline of buildings as you see across the sky. So, if you live in an apartment... Sometimes you can see the city skyline or if you're near the beach looking over the water or over the other on the island you can see the city skyline okay so until now there are two men both seriously ill in the same room of a great hospital okay so there's two men in the room they're both really sick one of them is next to the window and for one hour every day, that man can like sit up as a part of his treatment, you know, to make him feel better. And during that one hour, he describes what he can see outside. He can see a lake with ducks and swans and children playing with model boats. There are young lovers walking hand in hand beneath the trees and their flowers. And there's a city skyline and everything. And the other man is flat on his back okay the other man is flat on his back means he can he can't look out the window he just has to sit there listening to the other man describe everything because he can't sit up okay that's where we are right now and the next part the man on his back you know the man that could not sit up because he's not next to the window and he can't would listen to the other man describe all of this. Enjoying every minute. Yes. Every, he's just like, oh, oh, thank you for telling me all of this. He heard how a child nearly fell into the lake. And then the ducks, the zombie ducks attack him. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh no, that's not a part of the story. Sorry. He heard how a child nearly, nearly, Give me one word that means the same thing as nearly. One word that means the same as nearly. Hey, Jonathan, how's it going? Another word that means the same as nearly. Who's first in the chat? Almost perfect. Yeah, learner, just beat Tomic there. Closely, about to, no. Almost. This is the perfect answer. Nearly means almost. Now, near means close. Okay. Near means close. These are prepositions. But nearly is not nothing to do with close. It means almost. Okay. So he, he heard how a child almost fell. Fell is the past tense of fall. <gasps> he heard, he heard how a child nearly fell, almost fell into the lake. And the ducks were going to eat him. Nearly fell into the lake. And he also heard how beautiful the girls were and their summer dresses. These with the flowers and the yellows and the bright colors. So what's the difference between near and nearly? Near means close. Oops. You got near and far, far away in the distance. It is near me or close to me. Near, close or close to. Opposite is far. But nearly has nothing really to do with near. It means almost. Doing well, thanks, Jonathan. It's, yeah, adverb. Um, exactly. So he heard 
So he, he heard about the, what is it, about the, the children feeding ducks and sailing model boats, young lovers walking hand in hand, and, you know, stretches of grass, and, oh, look, you know, there's a child, look, a child almost fell into the lake. Oh, look at those beautiful girls in their summer dresses. Okay. His friend's descriptions eventually made him feel he could almost see what was happening outside. So the man next to the window was describing everything he could see in detail. Like the child almost fell in. Look at those lovers. Look at those dresses. They're like beautiful, bright colors. And look at this. Oh, look at the swans. They're like attacking each other. Okay, they're probably not. You know, and so he's just... So the guy that was always on his back made him feel like, oh, he, he could just imagine everything that was happening outside, okay? Then, yeah, he's a storyteller. The guy next to the window, for one, it's only for one hour every day. It's only one hour every day. So it's not the whole time. One hour, he can sit up, and he, he's next to the window, so he just say, says what he says. He say, says what he sees. Then, one fine afternoon, the thought struck him. Ah, Okay, what does that mean? The thought struck him. What are your thoughts? The thoughts are those crazy things. <laughs> you think in your head. <laughs> exactly. That's what... He describes absolutely everything that's happening. <laughs> Jorge. Uh, the meaning of eventually. Uh, was that in the last one, was it? Yeah. Eventually. It's like in the end. Eventually means in the end. In the end. Then one fine afternoon, the thought struck him. Okay, the thoughts, you know, the things that you think in your head, it's like, oh, I'm thinking some really terrible things right now. <laughs> okay, it's the things that you have in your head. But the thought struck him. What does struck him mean? Struck comes from to strike. To strike means to hit with force. To hit Hard. Eventually means finally. Good one, Eva. Thanks. To strike means to hit with force in a strong way. So if I say the, 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 the thought struck him, it means he suddenly thought. He came up with an idea. It's like, wow, the thought came to the head, but like, boom, like, bang. There it is. Inspiration can strike in the strangest places. That's a great one, Jane, Andrew Jane. That's great. So one fine afternoon, the thought struck him. He suddenly thought, like, boom. He's there, like, da da da, -da. Then suddenly the thought, wow, bah, into his head. <gasps> Why should the man next to the window have all the pleasure of seeing what was going on. Going on means what was happening. Why should the man... So the man on his back, he's listening to all of the description of the girls of the summer dresses and the lake and the swans and the model boats and the lovers hand in hand. And then suddenly he's like, why, why, why should he have all of this pleasure and fun and of seeing what was happening. Why shouldn't he get, why shouldn't I have the chance? Why shouldn't I have the opportunity? <gasps> Ooh. So just one day, all of a sudden, he's like, well, why does the man next to the window get to see everything? Why can't I see it? Why can't I be next to the window? Why shouldn't I have the opportunity? Ah. My house is close to the school. Because the life is unfair and yet to lie down flat on his... Exactly. That is the reason. That is the honest reason. Why can't he? Because he had to stay on his back the whole time. 
If he is next to the window, he can't sit up. He has to stay on his back, so it makes no difference. But the man next to the window, for one hour every day, he can sit up exactly. The other man was very lucky. The other man was very lucky. But, you know, he's, he's like, why sh can't I be next to the window? But, fortunately, he felt ashamed. Ashamed means embarrassed. Embarrassed is like when your face goes red and you're like, oh, I did something wrong. Or I thought something wrong. It's like, oh. It's like when you walk in the street and you accidentally fall. Ah, and then it's like, oh, you, what happens? Your face goes red because you're embarrassed. Like, oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I fell over. <laughs> he felt ashamed. Okay, so the man that's always on his back, he's not next to the window. He felt ashamed. Blushed? Yeah, you go red. That's a good verb, that one, Jimmy. He felt ashamed, embarrassed. But the more he tried not to think like that, like the more he tried not to think about, why can't I be next to the window? The worse or the more he wanted to change, okay? See, so try not to think about it. I'm not going to think about the window. I'm not going to think about the, win the window. The win I'm thinking about the window. No, don't think about the window. Don't think about the window. Ah, oh, no, don't do that. I, I want to be next to the window. No, don't think. So the more you try not to think about it, you think more. It happens in life a lot. I try not to think about chocolate, but then I think about chocolate, and then I want chocolate, and then I eat chocolate, and then I want more chocolate. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Jorge. Maybe the man next to the window is paying more money. That usually happens in clinics and things like that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, feels guilty, maybe. He felt a little, he's something wrong. Yeah, he's like, he felt embarrassed, but he's like, I try not to think about it, but I think more about it. Don't think about the window. No, don't think about the window. And he's like, he'd do anything. He'd is a contraction of he would okay he try not to think about it but then he would do anything to be next to the window now he's like i'm trying not to think about oh one night as he stared at the ceiling. Now, to stare, I didn't actually put this, but to stare means to look at in a fixed way. I'm going to stare at you now. Let's have a staring competition. Okay, it's like to look in a fixed way. It's like, is in a fixed way. Like, yeah, you're in a, in a fixed way. So one night as he stared at the ceiling, so he's just, he's on his back all the time, so he can't see anything, and he looks at the ceiling. Wow, that's fascinating. Hmm. Oh, look, there's an insect walking across the ceiling. One night as the man on his back stared at the ceiling, the second man should request more morphine and stop over, th I know, he should. He's like thinking too much. One night as he stared at the ceiling, the other man, the man next to the window, suddenly, oh, so yeah, ceiling is the top inside surface of the room. It's like that up there. You have the floor, the ceiling, okay? One night, as he stared at the ceiling, the other man next to the window suddenly woke up, coughing, <coughs> coughing. What is to cough? To force air out of the throat suddenly <coughs> and noisily. To stare is insist on watching something. It's like to focus, concentrate. Exactly. So to cough. So the man next to the window suddenly woke up <coughs> coughing and choking. What is to choke? Is to not be able to breathe. Because the passage to your lungs, remember your lungs are those organs in your body, is blocked. 
means the air cannot go into there. Like if someone does this to you, they this verb here <laughs> is to strangle. Don't try this at home, folks. To strangle uh, like this. If someone strangles you, you cannot breathe. Okay, it's like uh. so to choke means you cannot breathe because of something in your throat. Like sometimes you eat it. Someone's eating food at the restaurant. Eating food, yum, 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 and, and a bit of food gets stuck in their throat. And it's like, uh, uh, and they can't breathe. Okay, so they are choking. So that is what, what, is cho what choking means. Sounds like COVID. <laughs> exactly, that's what happens. He probably does have COVID. I, should, I, could I could change the story. So one of them has COVID, the other one doesn't. <laughs> anyway. One night as he stared at the ceiling, the other man next to the window suddenly woke up, coughing. <laughs> And choking, he couldn't breathe. His hands groping for the button. Oh, okay, to grope. To grope. Is the other man going to die? <gasps> We're going to find out soon, Yolit. It turns out... It turns out the treatment of draining his lungs was worthless. Exactly. He, remember, the other man, he had, like, fluid or liquid in his lungs... And that's why for one hour, you've got to get that fluid out of the lungs. But didn't work, that treatment. His hands groping for the button. Groping means to try and find something that you cannot see. Usually by feeling with your hands. For example, at night, <laughs> you already killed him. <laughs> so for example, at night... There's no lights. It's like, where, where are my keys? Where's the light? Where's the light? Tick. You grope. You try to find something with your hand without looking. Where is it? So the man next to his window, he's like groping for the button. Like, where's the, where's the button? Oh, I can't find it. <coughs> cough, cough, choke, choke. Where is it? And if he finds the button, he will press the button and the nurse will come running. Will come running. Okay, so the, the man next to the window wakes up, <coughs> coughing, choking. Uh, where's the button? Where's the button? I need the button. So he can call the nurse. But the man that's not next to the window watched without moving. Oh! Even including when the sound of breathing <gasps> stopped. Oh, okay. So what happened? What just happened? You're right. You're lit. He died. <laughs> exactly, Tomek. Maybe he wants to see the nurse running toward him. He wants that. So the man next to the window, he suddenly wakes up at night, <coughs> coughing, <coughs> where's the button? <coughs> and the other man, who's not next to the window, just watched without moving. Even when the sound of breathing stopped. He had, this is a nice story. This is a great night, good night story. It gets better, don't worry. The guy that was not next to the window, he had the opportunity to touch the button and the nurse would come, but he didn't do it. Nothing at all. Oh! Anyway. In the morning, the next morning, the nurse found the other man, the man next to the window, dead. And quietly, silently, took his body away. Oh. So the man next to the window died. The guy that wasn't next to the window, he could have helped. He could have pushed the button. But he didn't do it. So in the morning, the nurse came and took the body away. I'm worried for this man. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm worried too. As soon, pessimistic versus optimistic, <laughs> as soon as it seemed decent 
Like, when it seemed, it seemed means like appeared decent. The other man could have pressed the button instead of him. Exactly, he could have, but he didn't. <laughs> Bad health system and a sociopath next to you. Sweet. <laughs> exactly. As soon as it seemed decent or appeared decent or appropriate, the man asked if he could be switched. Switch means to be changed to the bed next to the window. Ah, oh, when it was appropriate, because you can't say, like, they take the body, oh, can I have the wind, can I have the bed, please, can I have the, it's still warm, no, it's not warm, but, can I have the bed, no, he waited, you know, he waited to, to an appropriate moment, you know, an appropriate moment to ask if he can be switched or changed to the bed next to the window. So they moved him. So eventually, they put him next to the window. He can't, he's not allowed to sit up. He has to stay on his back the whole time. So they moved him, tucked him in. This man is horrible. Yes, quietly means silently. That man is really bad. So they moved him to tuck him in. Now to tuck in is a great phrasal verb. It means... To make someone feel comfortable in bed by pulling the bed covers over them and tuck them under. It's typical you use this phrasal verb, especially with children at night. You tuck the children into bed. It's like, oh, there you go. You're, oh, you're nice and comfortable in bed now so that you will have sweet dreams. Okay? So that's the phrasal verb to tuck in. So they moved him next to the window. They tucked him in to the bed, you know, to make him comfortable, and, and made him quite comfortable. Be careful with the, pronoun the, the pronunciation, comfortable, okay, the O-R part, you don't really, you don't say, comfortable, comfortable, okay. <laughs> the nurse says, okay, we'll move you next to the window, here is your bill, cha-ching, oh, no, I don't. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. So they moved him. So now the man, he could have pressed the button. He's next to the window. He's quite comfortable. The minute they left, the minute, the moment the nurses left, <laughs> he propped himself up on one L. Remember what to prop is? To prop is to prevent something from falling by putting something under you. So he propped himself up on one elbow. This is your elbow, okay? So you prop yourself up on one elbow. He's trying to, you know, so he can look out the window. They left. He propped himself on one elbow painfully with a lot of pain. Oh, a lot of difficulty and laboriously, a lot of work. Because he's supposed to stay flat on his back. But he's not paying attention. He goes to, you know, on his elbow. The story demonstrates how terrible we are as human beings. One man killed another directly for a better bed in the hospital. Exactly. So your elbow, you know, it's that part here. The joint between your upper and lower parts of the body. So the minute they left, the nurses left, he got up, he propped himself up on one elbow, painfully and laboriously. Get rid of that one. Uh, ooh, ah, and looked out the window. Exactly. The So he propped himself up on one elbow, painfully and laboriously, and looked out the window. This verb, to face, this verb, to face, means to be opposite something or someone, to be positioned in front of. So he props himself up 
onto one elbow and he looks out the window. It faced a blank wall. Dun dun dun! <laughs> That is the end of the story. There was no park. There was no lake. No children. No lovers. No sailboats. No hor Nothing. So he, he gets up. And he looks out the window. And there's just a wall. A blank wall. Nothing there. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it would not want the window if then I stopped breathing. No, the window is for another. Definitely for another person. It faced a blank war. What is laboriously? Laboriously means with a lot of work. A lot of effort. A lot of effort. A lot of work. <laughs> it faced... So what happened? <clears throat> yeah, well, I just got to find my... Where is it? And the, he saw out the window a hearse with the other man heading to the cemetery. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. He looked out the window, just, you see it. Oh, the man next to the window invented all of the stories. Exactly. He was a politician, totally. <laughs> Telling stories. So, what did you think of the story? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to find something. So here is the... Hey, JJ. <laughs> How's it going? So here, the, of this, all of this story is there. Maybe he was blind, too. Maybe he was blind. Why do you think this happened? One man killed another for the bear next to the window. It's terrible. Exactly. He gets his own. So this... All of the story, except for the ending, appears on the website. And the link I just put there, if you want to read through it again. I've also put all of the vocabulary there. Now, why do you think... What happened? What happened, basically? What? Why did the man... Your description is really good. <laughs> Thanks. Why did the man next to the window say all of these things? Why? Morphine? No. <laughs> he killed a person just to, for his advantage, I know. What goes around comes around. Yeah? So why did the man next to the window describe? To support the mood of the other person? Maybe to help the other person? So he was being a, like a good person, wasn't he? He was being a good person. Like the guy next to the window was like, oh, you know, okay, he can't get up. He can't see anything. So for one hour, he would just invent things he could see. It wasn't true. It wasn't true at all. Just to try and make the other person feel better or happier or just everything like that. So that is probably why. <laughs> Hi, Nilifed. But the man that wasn't next to the window, he's like, he didn't know that there was nothing there. He didn't know the man next to the window was trying to help him. So what is, is there a, like a, a moral to the story here? What is the moral of the story? <laughs> Don't go to that hospital. He was just empathetic and caring. The other was just human trash. Perfect description there, Atomic. Exactly. He did that to change the atmosphere. Yeah, because the man next to the window, he could just say, oh, there's nothing there, just blank wall, boring. And for one hour, he just sit there looking at the wall, doing nothing. But he wanted maybe to do something to change the atmosphere of the room, to do, to make the other person feel better, maybe. Maybe. Mm. 
What did you think of the story? Did you like the story? Or not? <laughs> did you expect the ending? <clears throat> Hi, Marcos. Did you expect this ending at all? Did you expect it to be like, oh, that's what happened. Oh. <laughs> or did you like, ah, I knew what was going to happen. So that was my story. The window. Okay, not my story, but the story of the window. Unsolicited help doesn't pay off. <laughs> if they don't ask for help, don't do it. <laughs> because he had a great imagination and he wanted to think of something happy for him and the others. I know. And it's unfortunate because he was trying to be kind. So the moral is, don't be kind. Don't help people. <laughs> That's what you, that, that is the lesson. Don't help people. Don't be kind. Because <laughs> they might kill you. Because <laughs> he had a great imagination and he wanted to think of something happy for him and others. Don't be so kind because so many crazy people around. Yes, do more lessons like this one. Oh, you like this one. Good. I'm glad you liked it, Mary. Out of this. <laughs> that guy must have felt terrible to kill a man for nothing. Yeah, how do you think the man felt? How do you think the man felt when he looked out the window and there's nothing? A war. How do you think he felt? <laughs> Waiting for the comments, because there's a little delay in the comments all the time. You liked it, Marcos? That's good. Now, watch it. if you are a teacher, you, you can use the story with the kids, with your students and things like that. Oh, that's good. Uh, I like how you use the icon too. Yay. So if, if you're a teacher, this is, I used to, this is a lesson I used to, I used to have it printed. I used to have this printed. And I used to give it to the students, but I didn't have the end. I didn't have the last sentence. Just like on the website. <clears throat> Thanks, Rob. <clears throat> I'll no longer be nice to people. Perfect. <laughs> Moral is, you can create your own happiness. Yeah? <laughs> Please ask your doctor to examine your roommate more thoroughly in terms of mental health. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just tr don't get sick. <laughs> so yeah that is the end of this story <clears throat> next what are we going to do next week I think next week it's going to be one of our conversation one of our conversation lessons conversation topics I'm not too sure what it's about actually Anyhow, I'm going to see if I can find it the next topic is let me see if I can find it uh, Woodward English, just trying to see if I can find it. Questions. Oh, yeah, the next question is going to be, oh, perfect. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll put it now, just so you can see it and we get prepared for it. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Gaming, I do that on my other channel. I do, I do sort of gaming on, on the Woodward Games channel. Felt, felt depressed and tried to change everything for the man and himself. Exactly. Okay. One second. What I'm going to do is... So, on next Saturday, I'll... Well, New Zealand time. I'm just going to put the topic... Now. Okay, be one second. Where is it? Uh, question... Okay, it's just going to appear in one second. So this is question 11, this is question 12. Open. Boom. Done. This is going to be the topic for next... ta -da! There it is. For next... What's it next week? I've got to open it up, I can't see it. What things are important in order to have a healthy relationship? Oh, okay, so that's <clears throat> what we're going to talk about next week. 
How was the relationship of the people <laughs> in this room? <laughs> was that a healthy relationship? I don't think so. I don't think so. If you bring a story which contains some mistakes and ask us to correct, would be, oh, yes. That is called error analysis. And that is what I will be doing. Not next. Next week is this topic here. Next week is a conversation. What things are important in order to have a healthy relationship. And then the other week, <clears throat> I'm going to well, do what you just mentioned, Mary, which is called, I call it error analysis. Well, it's called error analysis. Error analysis. And this is where sometimes the sentences are correct, sometimes they're not. So it's going to be like a type of game and everything. But that's a great thing. So yes, we will do that. Eva says he was jealous of the other man and the killer. Yeah, he was. He was a killer. <coughs> Things important and to have a healthy relationship, stay single. Hort <laughs> is going to ask your wife. <laughs> that is a great topic. So yeah, this is the topic we're going to talk about next time. Respect is very important. But we're not going to... So think about what we're going to talk about next time. Okay? Things that you... So get your list, get your vocabulary before the class. Because that, <laughs> that's what... No, that, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay? So that is all for today. The story of... Yeah, someone mentioned something here. <laughs> I saw your comment, Ange. Uh, <laughs> yes. So that is the story called The Window. I hope you can share this with other people, maybe. It's not my story. I put the author of the story in the on the website. So thank you everyone for dropping by this to this this week to say hello. Hey Gaga, hello, we're, all, we're just saying goodbye to, we're about to say goodbye to everyone. Thank you everyone for coming and participating in this story. Yokla, thank you Miguel, thanks Tomic, thanks everyone that participated and give your thoughts and helped with the meanings and definitions and everything like that. Thank you Mrs. G for dropping by and Larissa, have a nice day. Everyone, I hope you have an awesome i hope you have an awesome weekend okay let's see if this is gonna appear yeah so have an awesome weekend enjoy today is early yeah hope you all have an enjoy enjoy and that's gonna be it have a great weekend everyone thanks a lot take care stay safe and have an awesome day